Okay, post-trib moment number 57. Um, here again, he lies. What he does is he'll read a verse, and then he reads another one, and he says, oh, see, this one means this one. I'm going to show you how he lies here. If we get the context of verse 1, the Bible says, Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. He's in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 1. Christ, and by our gathering together unto him. Uh, that would indicate that the day of Christ is... The day of Christ appears in the next verse. It does not indicate that it's the same thing. ...is the rapture. Because in 1 Thessalonians 4, it says, We which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord. And it talks about the fact that we will be caught up together with him in the clouds. Okay, let's look at the thing here. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Okay. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together unto him. That's the rapture, the pre-trib rapture. That ye be not soon shaken in mind, or be troubled, neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter as from us, as that the day of Christ is at hand. Wait a second. Why would they be troubled of the day of Christ is at hand if it's this event up here? Why are they being troubled if this event and this event are the same thing? Okay, this is the second coming. Okay, the day of Christ, also known as the day of the Lord. I believe that those are the two, those two things are the same thing. They're being troubled because people are saying they're teaching them what this little liar right here is teaching people. They're teaching them that there will be no pre-trib rapture. That you're going to go through the time of Jacob's trouble. That you're going to go through God's wrath for seven years, which is what the Bible teaches. Steve Anderson's a liar on that issue too. See? He's saying, I'm beseeching you by the coming of our Lord and our gathering together unto him, the pre-trib rapture, that ye be not soon shaken in mind or be troubled neither by spirit nor by word nor by letter as from us, as that the day of Christ is at hand. Okay, if this is the same event, why are they troubled? See, it doesn't make any sense. This guy's such a liar. So, at the rapture, Jesus Christ comes in the clouds and we are gathered together unto him. So that would indicate that that's what the day of Christ is. That would show that the rapture... No, it does not. You're a liar. Why are they troubled then? It cannot happen at any moment, and that the rapture has to take place after the falling away or apostasy takes place, and after the man of sin is revealed by declaring himself to be God in the... T wrong. Wrong. Read the, t read the chapter. Okay. Right here you have... He who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. Somebody's taken out of the way, and then the wicked is revealed. Okay? This teaching, yes, the apostasy comes first. There will come a falling away first. We're in that right now. But the man of sin being revealed, the son of perdition, does not happen until the body of Christ is removed. That's what the Bible teaches. Temple of God. But let's prove further that the day of Christ really is the day that the rapture will take place. If we go back to Philippians 1, this is a famous verse that you've probably heard before. In verse 6, the Bible reads, Being confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. So according to that scripture... Uh, until the day of what? Jesus Christ. See, again, he can't read plain English. The day of Christ, the day of Jesus Christ. Read the context, man. This is so ridiculous. When we get saved, the Lord begins to work in us. And the Bible says that we can be confident of this very thing. That he which hath begun a good work in us will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. So, ask yourself this question. When will God's work in our life be, be done? When will this good work that he's begun in us, that he's going to perform until the day of Christ, when will that end? Well, if you think about it... See see what he did? The, in context, it was the day of Jesus Christ. Now he says the day of Christ. See, he changed the scripture right there. The uh. Bible teaches that at the rapture, we're going to be changed in a moment in a twinkling of an eye. And the Bible says that this corruptible will put on incorruption. This mortal will put on immortality. If you read Romans 7 and 8... Paul is talking about the fact that our flesh causes us to sin and he's looking forward to that great day in Romans 8 when 
our body will be redeemed, talking about the resurrection or the rapture, where our body will be changed. And instead of having a, a, a righteous spirit and a sinful flesh, which is what we have right now, and that's why the, the flesh and the spirit war against one another, at the rapture, our flesh will be changed. Our flesh will be redeemed. Our flesh will be saved. And then we will be uh, all together redeemed, body, soul, spirit. We will be sinless. That's why when we get to heaven, we'll never sin again. Now, we sin on this earth as believers, don't we? We are in the flesh. And when we walk in the flesh, we fulfill the lust of the flesh. We, we endeavor to walk in the spirit so that we don't fulfill the lust of the flesh. But at that first resurrection, at the rapture, when our body and our flesh is redeemed, we shall be like him for we shall see him as he is. And from then on, we'll never sin again. We will be perfect and blameless and spotless before him. Uh, praise God for that. And so, the sanctification, the work of sanctification that God is doing in our lives, He will perform until the day of Jesus Christ. Why? Because it's not necessary from the day of Jesus Christ and forward because we're already uh, in His image at that point. We're already conformed to the image of the Son of God. We're already without fault before the throne of God. We're already completely regenerated in body, soul, and spirit at that point. So this use of the day of Christ in Philippians 1.6... Whoa, 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 whoa. Philippians 1.6. He just said, this use of the day of Christ in Philippians 1.6. You see, he started out saying the day of Jesus Christ, and then he just changed it. He just changed the scripture. Let's see it again. We're already completely regenerated in body, soul, and spirit at that point. So this use of the day of Christ in Philippians 1.6. You see it? This use of the day of Christ. He just lied to you. Right there, it's the day of Jesus Christ. It's not the same thing. Makes perfect sense and matches up perfectly with what we saw in 2 Thessalonians 2. No, it doesn't. Why would you be troubled? Of the, over the day of Christ. If it's something that you're going to go and be rewarded for. If it's the same as the day of Jesus Christ in Philippians 1.6. Why would you be troubled about this? See, he's lying to you. That the day of Christ is the coming of Christ and our gathering together unto him. That is what takes place on the day of Christ. Okay, why are they troubled? Now, I, I've talked about in the past the day of the Lord. You say, is the day of the Lord different than the day of Christ? Well, let me say this. They both take place on the same day. Read 1 Thessalonians 4 and then continue reading to chapter 5, verse 2. But when the Bible talks about the day of the Lord, he's usually emphasizing the negative aspects, which are not toward us, but are toward the unsaved. The wrath and judgment that's poured out right yeah. after we are raptured. And when he uses the term day of Christ, it's a positive mention about the fact that we are looking for Jesus Christ to come. See, when Jesus Christ comes... Okay, it's a positive mention. It's, it's a negative thing, you know. And whatever, you know, oh, it's, it's positive. Okay, back to the passage. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. That ye be not soon shaken in mind or be troubled. Does that sound positive? Is that the day of Christ is at hand? Why are they scared about the day of Christ? If... It's a positive thing. He's lying to you. We're going to be rejoicing. We're going to be thrilled. We're going to be, it's going to be the happiest moment of our lives when we see Jesus Christ coming in the clouds. And well, then why are the believers in Thessalonica scared? We're caught up together to be with them. The unsaved, however, they will face that day as a horrible day. A day of darkness and wrath and gloominess and punishment and judgment upon them. So it really just depends on which side of this thing you're on, whether you look at it as the day of Christ or the day of the Lord. But it's the same day. And it's the day of the rapture. It's the day of Christ coming in the clouds with the trumpet. Whatever. Liar.